I need more time before I'm ready. Maybe tomorrow will be better. I'm not good enough at presenting. I'm just too shy. I just can't ever get it She's right. She's better at this than I am. I could never do that. I'm just not cut out for this. I would, but I don't think I'm ready. I wish I was somebody else. Over the year, I've been thinking a lot about how to overcome self-doubt, how to raise my self-esteem, raise my sense of self-worth, express my true self, and feel more confident in what I bring to the table. Maybe right now you find yourself in a situation where you're applying for your dream job and feel a bit like an imposter. Maybe you struggle with staying true to yourself when you're around certain people like your parents, family, or friends. Maybe you feel inspired to start your own business but struggle with believing that you can actually make it happen. I believe that we can all relate to feeling hesitant about our choices and that we've all experienced second-guessing ourselves at some point in our lives. I still run into situations where my self-doubt reigns on my parade, where my fear of not measuring up to another person's idea of success makes anxious thoughts swirl in my mind. But I will say that because of the practices and the habits that I've been cultivating that I'm going to be sharing with you today, the level of doubt that I do feel when I'm in those types of situations isn't nearly as intense or as scary as it used to be. I found that there are roughly five reasons why self-doubt thrives, and getting to know each of them intimately, the roles they play in your life, and any patterns you've been looping because of them. That's what really opens the door to overcoming self-doubt, building self-esteem, and springboarding yourself into a life where you have the confidence to unapologetically be your true self. The first reason is when we've become too risk averse. I used to fall into this pattern where I'd feel inspired to do something new, something that aligned with my goals. But if the effort I'd have to put into it was just a little bit too uncomfortable, or if I had nothing in my past I could compare it to so I could predict how things would turn out, I would sometimes talk myself out of taking action simply to avoid the possibility of feeling embarrassed or rejected. I've found that when I'm having a lot of self-doubt around taking aligned and healthy risks, that type of self-doubt is signaling that we need to focus on two things, cultivating self-trust and letting go of control. To strengthen the trust you have in yourself, you'll need to take some aligned action and start intentionally taking a chance on the unknown. That is what will create the proof that your subconscious needs to believe that you are capable of navigating situations that you don't have all of the answers for. Now that doesn't mean that you have to jump into the most challenging scenario you can think of right off the bat. I actually believe that I found more success in building my self-esteem and building my confidence by taking a slower and more gentle approach to walking through my fears. When I used to force myself to jump five steps ahead of where I was energetically, I would often reinforce that limiting block or that fear that I was trying to heal. So the next time that you're facing this type of self-doubt, try taking some small, very little aligned steps that match up energetically with where you're at, what you feel like you can take on, that are also slightly outside of your comfort zone. To give you an example of what that process can look like, one of my biggest blocks that I wanted to overcome this year was my codependency and my fear of doing things alone. The first small step I took was promoting myself from passenger princess to being the main driver in the relationship. Then I started taking myself on solo dates, like going to coffee shops by myself and going to the park to read. Now I've started going to events by myself to meet other girls in the area. Slowly but surely, meeting myself where I'm at, releasing my need for control and comfort, and taking more leaps of faith has improved my self-esteem and the level of trust that I have in myself when I take healthy risks. Secondly, when we become too risk averse and we let our need for answers and clarity become a requirement for moving forward, what we're actually doing is shutting ourselves off from the things that we want to come to us from unfolding and manifesting in the ways that they're actually meant to, the ways that they're actually supposed to. Something I've learned is that more often than not, the things that we want they come to us in the most odd, weird, out there ways that we could never expect. And so we want to have an open mind. So when I feel this need for clarity and control coming up, 
I like to intentionally let myself be surprised by what the day has to offer. I pour more of my energy into practicing mindfulness, letting go of control, letting go of any expectations that I have, and simply focus more on being in the present moment. Also, something fun that I like to do, or at least I find fun, is whenever I'm nervous or overthinking and anxious about walking into a new situation, I like to sing the chorus to K Sera Sera by Doris Day over and over in my head. That song just instantly calms my nerves. Let me know in the comments if you have a song that does that for you too. The second reason why we might be doubting ourselves is when we don't believe that our best effort is good enough. This is the part of us that's the perfectionist, the part of us that is afraid of failing or making mistakes to the point it immobilizes us. And personally, this type of self-doubt makes me become the person that puts the pro in procrastination. This can look like staying quiet in conversations because you're afraid of saying the wrong thing, needing a backup plan for your backup plan in case you drop the ball, or spending all of your energy and time preparing yourself to only then end up talking yourself out of taking action because you don't feel ready. I've actually dedicated an entire video to how I've been healing this part of me. I highly recommend watching that next if you are a perfectionist and a procrastinator as well. But when it comes to overcoming self-doubt in this way and building self-esteem, I found that these four reminders help me immensely in the moment when I notice self-doubt creeping in. One, I'm human, not a machine, and any mistakes I make won't end the world. Two, every single person on this earth is a work in progress. They're just experimenting, learning, and trying to do their best every day. I shouldn't put anyone on a pedestal. Three, I deserve to try. Four, even if an idea flops or someone disagrees with me, I'm still worthy of taking up space. The people and situations that are meant to be in your life will never make you feel like you have to prove yourself. And I hope that you start to see that just like you, everyone is throwing spaghetti at the wall, just waiting to see what sticks. The third reason why we might be struggling with self-doubt is when we're stuck in a scarcity mindset. When you want something in your life that you don't believe you could ever attain. Maybe because you feel that there's just not enough to go around, that the market is too saturated to make space for you that you'll just get lost in the crowd, that you don't have the skill set, or because you feel like you're not the kind of person that has good things happen to them. That's when you're looking at life through the lens of fear and lack. Personally, when my self-doubt is because I don't believe that feeling abundant is possible for me, I have somewhat of a three-step plan or a routine that helps me heal the root of what's going on and why I'm in a lack mindset. First, I prioritize self-care. So taking a shower, cleaning up my space, going for a walk outside in nature, and prioritizing getting myself back to a peaceful state of mind puts me in a place where I can objectively reflect on my self-doubt and listen to my intuition on how to move through it. After feeling like I'm at peace with myself, I then take an honest look at what it is that I feel like I'm lacking. I found that when I'm struggling with this particular type of self-doubt, it's almost always because I'm comparing myself to others, which usually happens because I'm mindlessly scrolling for way too long on social media, and that always shines a spotlight on the part of me that feels inadequate. But something that I've learned that has really helped me reframe the way that I see jealousy and envy, what we're jealous of in others is untapped potential within us. And that's just such an empowering thought because once you discover what it is that you feel like you're lacking from your life, you have all of the power to take those small steps towards bringing it into your reality. And that brings us to the third step. After I've pinpointed what it is exactly that I feel like I'm lacking, I take initiative and take intentional steps forward that help me feel prepared to create the life I want. So for example, if you feel pulled to change your career, think about what skills you can start to learn that bridge you from your current role to your desired one. And the kindest thing that you can do for yourself in this space of self-doubt is to let yourself step into the role of being a student and being a beginner. Commit to trying something new that nurtures your soul and brings you some sense of fulfillment. You don't have to be an expert from day one. Significant changes take time, effort, and consistency but I promise you that if you choose to be consistent, regardless of how motivated you feel, 
if you focus on making progress rather than trying to be perfect, if you go out there and give it your best shot, one day you will feel confident with that new skill that you're learning and your self-doubt will start to fade. The fourth reason why we may be struggling with self-doubt is when we're disconnected from our true self. When we haven't taken the time to learn our personal rhythm, patterns, and cycles, how to connect to our intuition, what we actually value, and what we want our life to feel like. Building a relationship with myself has played a significant role in helping me overcome self-doubt and improve my self-esteem. Growing up, I really struggled with choosing myself and connecting to my authenticity. Being a people pleaser and perfectionist, I would often abandon myself over and over again, doing everything that I could to just be accepted and loved by my friends, my past partners, and my family. To connect deeper with myself, I first started spending quality time doing things that I genuinely enjoy by myself. I remember I was pretty much terrified when I decided to take myself on my first solo date back in March. And looking back at it, I honestly feel like I'm an entirely different person now because of how confident I feel doing things on my own. Building up my self-esteem in that way has really helped me feel confident in making decisions and sticking to them. Whereas before, my first response would be to second guess myself and to look to others to lead the way. The second habit that's helped me connect with my true self has been letting go of any expectation that I have of what my authenticity should look like. I'm not sure if I'm the only person who used to do this, but I used to believe that my authentic self was this fixed version of me with fixed interests, desires, and a fixed personality. I thought that once I found my authenticity, I would experience this great clarity for where I needed to go in life, that I would have all of the answers and cross an imaginary self-improvement finish line. But eventually, I saw just how limiting that belief was. Our authenticity evolves and it changes over time. What was authentic and aligned for you yesterday may not be what's right for you today. What's helped me feel more confident and connected to who I am at my core has been basically letting myself reintroduce myself to my authenticity every single day. Letting her tell me who she is versus trying to keep her within the bounds of an image that I've constructed. I intentionally give myself permission to change my mind if something else feels right. The third thing that's helped me connect deeper to myself and overcome self-doubt has been learning how to tell the difference between my intuition and my anxiety. I'm by no means perfect at this, but I feel like it's becoming a bit easier to tell whether or not a thought or idea that comes up is to serve my growth or if it's coming from my ego trying to protect me. I've learned that when a thought or an urge comes from fear and anxiety, it almost always feels intense and pushy and it always makes me want to fall back into old patterns that I'm trying to break away from. On the other hand, my intuition, sometimes it doesn't make sense, it almost always doesn't make sense, but it feels soft and it feels challenging but in a supportive way, almost like an old friend who you know always has your best interest at heart and is offering you some very sound advice. Also, I've noticed that for a split second, it almost feels as though my heart space is opening up. Like my body is expanding rather than contracting. And I get this deep knowing and it's just for a split second, I swear. I get this knowing that it's the right move to make even though it feels uncomfortable or challenging. So ultimately, I would say that paying attention to what my limiting patterns are and cultivating habits that help get me into my body every single day, like meditation, mindful movement, and breathing exercises, is how I've been able to discern between my anxiety and my intuition so that I can feel more confident in the choices that I make. The fifth reason why we may be doubting ourselves is when we place our self-worth in how someone else perceives us. Personally, this one has been the most challenging for me to overcome, but little by little, choosing myself and finding my voice has helped me build my self-esteem in social situations. First, ask yourself, have you given them a chance to accept you? Sometimes how we believe someone will respond isn't accurate at all, and the other person is more kind, compassionate, and understanding than we think. But we'll never know until we give them a chance to know the real us. 
On the other hand, if you are riddled with self-doubt because you're with someone that has expressed that they don't agree with your choices, understand that you can validate how someone else feels without changing your direction. Because at the end of the day, you are the person experiencing your life and you deserve to support whatever it is that makes you happy. Also, when you're with someone that has reinforced your self-doubt, that's the time to protect your peace by setting boundaries. Personally, I've started saying no to things that feel really draining. I've stopped sharing news, both good and bad, with people in my life that don't agree with my choices. And I've had conversations where I ask the other person if we can avoid talking about a specific subject that often stirs up arguments. And with all of my boundaries, if I'm feeling heated in any way, very upset with that person, I always make sure that I separate myself from them for a little bit, give myself time to simmer down, cool off. That way I can approach setting this boundary from a place of love and kindness. That way it has a higher chance of sticking and that person respects your boundary and doesn't cross any lines. Also, if you're setting a boundary with somebody that you wanna maintain your relationship with, that you wanna keep in your life, and they're worth the effort, more often than not, that type of person, they genuinely want to see you succeed. They genuinely want to see you happy. They just can't look past their own limiting beliefs, their blocks, what they've been taught growing up. They can't see past that to see that there's another way of living. And that's no excuse for them, but that can help you approach setting that boundary in a place of understanding and calmness. That can help make sure that person doesn't feel attacked and it can help preserve the relationship that you have with them. I hope that you found this video on how I overcome self-doubt, a guide to building self-esteem and confidence valuable. I hope you see that the confidence you're looking for is already within you. It just takes a little bit of self-love and the occasional singing session of K Sera Sera. I can't wait to spend more time with you in the next video.